I love photography. It's always been a hobby and passion of mine. And while most of my professional work is focused on motion capture, I also do photography professionally as well. But I've always just really enjoyed photography as a hobby as well. But the problem is, is my current camera that I use for stills capture, the Canon R5, every time I pick that camera up, I immediately go into work mode. And what I mean by that is like, it's just a muscle memory thing. As soon as I grab the camera, I just, I get in this mindset of, cool, I'm going to work. And when I bring that on family vacations or events or just like street photography, I really have to force myself to get out of that mindset because I just, I get too involved with the camera, with settings and making sure everything looks perfect and, and all that. And it, it honestly, like it distracts me from what I should be doing is just capturing moments as they happen casually. And it's no fault of the camera. It's just a me thing. It's just my mindset when I pick the camera up. Same thing when I grab my Red Komodo X. I immediately go into work mode and that's fine. And when I've grabbed those cameras, like those cameras are for those jobs, right tool for the job. But it's kind of led me on this journey in the search for the last year or so. And I've kind of been on the search for a camera that is a completely different system from what I'm used to, to be kind of my everyday camera for street photography, walking around town, family vacations, birthday parties, like all that kind of stuff. And I think I have found that camera and that is the Nikon ZF. Now this video isn't going to be a full detailed review of this camera. This camera is not new by any means. And there are a lot of great videos out there that go over tech specs and how to do auto ISO and all like all kinds of stuff that it never really interests me to really dive into. This camera has just kind of been the answer to that, that search of finding the everyday camera. Now, real quick, before we get into this, I want to thank B&H for loaning this camera out to me. They've been a huge supporter of this channel and this video would not have been possible without them supporting this channel and loaning this camera out to me as well as the 24 to 120 so I could test it out, make a video on it, and uh, just share my experiences with it. And that's exactly what this video is. This is more of a user experience video than it is a full detailed review. But once again, thank you so much b and I will leave links to b and down in the description below if you are interested in picking anything up that I talk about or just anything photo, video, audio, all that stuff related. Head over to b and that's where I do all my shopping and um, I've always been happy with them. So what I wanna do in this video is I wanna talk about just some of the things that I've really enjoyed with the system and then talk about a couple of quirks with it that really don't bother me at all for the use cases that I've found with this camera. So first of all, what are the use cases? I mentioned this earlier, but the use cases I had in mind for this camera was just a walkabout camera, something that is just like an everyday camera and I personally wanted a camera that I could change the lenses out. So if I wanted to get further reach or more compression or a different field of view, I could change the lenses and a full frame sensor was something that just, I always prefer to have on stills capture, especially, and then a completely different system and the retro design. So the completely different system, the Nikon, my first camera that I bought was a Canon over 10 or 15 years ago, something like that. So it's a completely different system, like menu system and all that, but everything is really easy to navigate because you have all the dials on the top. And that's the next thing is just the retro design. This is just a camera, just aesthetically, it's just super pleasing. And with this 40 mil lens that I pretty much keep on here at all times, it just has this really awesome retro old film camera appeal. And Nikon did a really good job with just all the details and even like the screen on the back, it flips around. So if you want to vlog or whatever you can, but most of the time I just leave this screen closed and it's got the same texturing as it does on the front. That just kind of gives it this old retro film style camera appeal. I have tried my hardest to focus on just using the dials on the camera as opposed to using scroll wheels and stuff like that, just because I wanted to force myself to slow down to be able to take photos 
as a hobby. And like, if I could sum up this camera in one statement, I would say that this camera brings out the hobbyist in me. Now, another real cool thing about this camera is there's actually dual card slots. So you can see there's an SD card slot right here, but right below it, there's a micro SD card slot. Initially, I thought that was kind of a, a funny decision to put a micro SD card slot in the camera, but the way I kind of see it is built in internal memory. And so I just put a, I think it was like a 32 gigabyte micro SD card that I had lying around and it's plenty fast for casual stills capture. Now battery life is actually really impressive on this camera. Again, for stills, I haven't really spent too much time with video, but I'll touch on the video here in a little bit. But the battery life has been really good. I got the camera with the battery, an extra battery, and then I went out and bought a this small rig battery as well, which I was really interested in because it has a USB-C port on the back of it, which you can charge, which is really cool. But between three batteries, even when I went to Vegas for NAB, which is an, which is the camera I brought for that to take mainly stills, but some video as well on the show floor, I didn't charge any of the batteries and they lasted me all three or four days or however many days I was there. So uh, yeah, battery life is super impressive. Now, another important thing with the camera is image quality because if you have a cool looking camera and it feels really nice to take pictures with and all that and the images don't look good well then it's a useless camera well the images out of this camera are incredible i mean it's a 26 megapixel sensor i believe it's 26 somewhere around there which is more than enough for anything it's plenty enough for print obviously enough for social and digital and all that and probably like my biggest surprise was how how much shadow detail there was i was just always i've been always really amazed about how much you could recover from the shadow so typically what i've been doing is exposing to the left just to protect the highlights because the shadow detail in the raw images is pretty impressive i think nikon really knocked it out of the park with this camera and as a photo only camera i think it is the perfect camera now if you are out there for hybrid capabilities, I think that's where you will start to become a little bit more disappointed when it comes to the video side of things. And that's probably like my first, com I wouldn't even say complaint, but I would say observation because I really didn't have any intentions of using this seriously for any video work. But number one, the rolling shutter is really bad. Like the rolling shutter is pretty bad in this camera. I'm mainly using my Red Komodo X for motion, which has a global shutter. Going back to a rolling shutter that's this poor is kind of jarring. And then there is a crop at 4K 60. So that is a downside for some people. But for me, again, I didn't really intend to use this at all for motion capture. So those are just more of observations than they are complaints because I don't really use this camera for video. Now I have used it for video. I took it to the NAB show and just took some video on the show floor, just interviewing a couple different brands and stuff. And that's where I used the 24 to 120 primarily. And this was great. It has internal stabilization and then the camera itself, itself has internal sensor stabilization as well. And between that, it, look great for all handheld like i didn't have a tripod but josh satin was nice enough to hold the camera for me for some of the interviews and it looked great and the image itself looks nice and all i did on those videos i just applied a color space transform from nlog to rec 7 or 9 and that's all i did with it i didn't spend any time color grading or anything just rec 7 9 transform and i think it turned out looking really nice and i'll link them down below so you can watch them in a little bit more detail and also just learn about some new tech at nab but yeah that's pretty much my major complaint or observation about this camera and really has to do with video. The only other thing that I found with this camera that I've not been super stoked on is the file format, the raw file format. When I drop it into Finder on my Mac, usually like you know, with my Canon, I can hit the space bar and I'll, I can get a preview. I'm not able to do that with the Nikon format. I'm not sure if it's just the, the file format with the ZF or if it's all Nikon format, but that's that could be a deal breaker, especially if you are 
using this like i was using this to take some street photography stuff the only way for me to really catalog it was to bring it into lightroom that just adds a, another step in the process for backing up and archiving and stuff but all in all i have been super impressed with the nikon zf i think it is the the answer to my search for finding a photo only everyday camera and i am very sad to box it up and send it back to b &H because my loaner period is coming to a close once again thank you so much to b &H for sending this out to me i will leave links down in the description below and if my user experience as well as the photos that i've shown throughout this video have influenced your decision at all to pick one of these up then definitely use the links in the description below they are affiliate links it doesn't cost you anything extra but i get a small commission from the sale and that helps keep this channel chugging along so i am done rambling terrible at outros so thanks for watching and i will see you in the next one peace <music>